with living standards ever rising and currently being at an all-time high, the need to have a side hustle has almost become a necessity. One of the side hustles that people have really ventured into is the taxi business and people often inquire on which are the best taxi cars to go for. Cars which are fuel efficient, reliable and affordable to maintain. There are several cars that tick these boxes, but one of the major challenges that most people are facing is the price of cars, which has really gone up to the point that basic cars such as the Toyota Vits, Nissan Note and Honda Fit are going for over 1 million shillings, especially from 2016 models and onwards. Some people are also a bit skeptical about going for hybrids because, yes, they will give outstanding fuel efficiency, but on the flip side, once the hybrid batteries are dead, replacing them can cost a fortune. So what's the solution to this dilemma? There are these two small city cars which are relatively affordable to buy. They are going for less than 1 million shillings and they are non-hybrids but their fuel efficiency is at par with hybrid cars. So they give very good fuel consumption without having the complexity of hybrid cars. I'm talking about the 2016 Daihatsu Mira ES and the 2016 Suzuki Alto. Which one between these two would make the perfect taxi car for your side hustle? That's what we will be finding out in today's in-depth comparison. So please stay tuned. Do consider subscribing to the channel for more informative content on cars as well as bikes. And welcome to Ikevoto Reviews. So before we start, I'd kindly like to bring this to your attention. Going by YouTube statistics, a whopping 87.5% of the viewers are not subscribed. They keep watching, but they never subscribe. So please do me the kind favor of subscribing. It will go a long way in supporting the channel, and I will really appreciate it. We make this informative content to help someone out there, and if in one way or another these videos help you, then please just do me the kind favor of subscribing. I'll be very grateful. So that said, let's get straight into the review. The 2016 Suzuki Alto is the 8th generation which was in production from 2014 till 2021. So it's a car that has been in production for a very long time. The 2016 Daihatsu Mira is the 1st generation which has been in production from 2011 till 2017. Though there was the other Daihatsu Mira, the L series, which has been in production for seven generations since 1980. The L275 series is related to the ES. In fact, they are quite similar except for a few aesthetic, aesthetical differences here and there. But generally, the Daihatsu Mira nameplate has been in existence for over 40 years. A 2016 Suzuki Alto will set you back between 650 to around 800,000 shillings, depending on the trim level and mileage. The turbocharged variants are the most expensive. In fact, they are the ones that are going for as much as 800,000. The Daihatsu Mira is also similarly priced. A 2016 model is going for between 630 to around 30,000 shillings. So generally, they are almost evenly matched in terms of the price. These are the very few remaining cars that have not yet hit that 1 million mark. In fact, just a few years ago, these cars were going for around 500,000 shillings. And I won't be surprised in a few years to come, they will also follow suit and reach the 1 million mark. Let's now move on to the engine options. Both cars really keep it simple in this regard. Both come with a small 660cc 3-cylinder petrol engine. The Alto has both a naturally aspirated option as well as a turbocharged option that has an additional 11 horsepower. The naturally aspirated one produces 52 horsepower while the turbocharged option produces 63 horsepower. The transmission options are either a CVT or a 5-speed manual. The car is available in either front or all-wheel drive. There is also a very mild hybrid option known as the NA charging. It's not a fully-fledged hybrid. It's just a mild hybrid setup that uses a high-efficiency, high-output alternator to generate electricity using the deceleration energy that is available every time the driver presses the brake. In other words, known as regenerative braking. The system stores the electricity in a lead-acid battery that is 
specially designed for vehicles e equipped with the engine stop start system and in high efficiency lithium ion battery it uses the stored electricity to power electrical equipment such as the radio thereby minimi minimizing the amount of petrol used by the engine to generate electricity power wise these are not fast cars at all they are just simple cars for town and city drives that are aimed at achieving outstanding fuel efficiency. They are cars that are not ideal for any long distance drives. The 660cc in the Daihatsu Mira produces around 49 horsepower and in terms of the transmission it only comes with a CVT and it's also available in front or all-wheel drive. So generally these are strictly town or city cars. They are not suited for long distances. Both, both cars can achieve between 20 to around 30 kilometers per liter depending on how you drive and also on how much weight the vehicle is carrying. You can even surpass the 30 kilometer per liter mark if you are very gentle on the throttle. They also come with idling stop technology to save that extra bit of fuel. So whenever you come to a complete stop, the engine will switch off. Then the moment you press on the accelerator, the engine will come back to life. This technology has had its fair share of issues and not just in these two cars but also in other cars. Yes, it can help to save a bit of fuel but it also puts a bit of strain on the engine especially in frequent stop and go traffic because of the frequent switching on and off of the engine. It can lead to a bit of wear on the engine and in some severe cases the engine can even fail to switch back on. So it's not very advisable to always have this feature constantly on. You can disable it at times. Uh, that aside, these are among the most fuel efficient non-hybrid cars. Their fuel efficiency is at par with that of hybrids and their main advantage is the outstanding consumption without the complexity of hybrid technology. The Alto has a 27 liter fuel tank while the Daihatsu Mira has a 30 liter tank. In terms of the brakes, both cars have solid discs at the front and drums at the back though the turbocharged uh, versions of the suzuki alto have ventilated discs at the front these are not fast cars so the brake setup is very sufficient the carb weight of the alto ranges between 610 to 740 kgs while that of the daihatsu mira ranges between 730 to 790 kgs so they are very light cars no wonder the impressive efficiency the ground clearance of the alto is 160 millimeters which is quite good and better than the mirrors, which is around 145 millimeters. The advantage that these cars have is the short wheelbase. So even if the clearance is not that high, chances of scratching the underside are low. And also the fact that these are primarily city cars, it's unlikely that you will frequently encounter huge bumps and uneven road surfaces. Lastly, some of the extra features you can get in both cars include alloy wheels, fog lights, and automatic AC. The Alto can add projector headlights and that's it. They are simple budget cars, so they don't have many features. For the purposes of weight reduction and also simplicity to also en enhance reliability. Safety-wise, the upper trim variants come with collision mitigation. And this is whereby if the system detects, detects you are on the verge of a collision, and you are not reacting by applying the brakes, the system will automatically engage the brakes to prevent the collision or reduce the impact, if at all the collision still occurs. So that is very impressive, especially considering these are budget cars. Now onto their exterior designs. Which one would you prefer? Do let me know in the comment section. I would any day go with the Daihatsu Mira. Its design is simple and inoffensive. It's easy on the eyes. I don't think the same can be said about the Suzuki Alto. It just looks polarizing. I would say that design was a bit of a miss. It just doesn't look that good, though looks are subjective and some people may still like it. Interior-wise, these cars are very similar from the space they offer to the dash designs and practicality. In fact, their wheelbases are almost similar with a difference of only 5 millimeters in favor of the Suzuki Alto, which measures around 2460 mm versus the Daihatsu Mira, which measures 2455 millimeters. 
At the front, they both offer good space for even taller people. Surprisingly, the second row also offers a decent space. There's ample head and legroom in, in both cars. But being narrow cars, only two people can be accommodated at the back. The good legroom has compromised on the boot space, which is very limited. In fact, you can fit very little back there, maybe just a few soft bags and that will be it. The seats are relatively comfortable. The padding is not that good, but being that these cars are suited for only short distances, that may not be such a big problem. By the time you start feeling a bit uncomfortable, you will have already reached your destination. Now, on to their strengths and weaknesses. These cars are quite similar in many ways, and even when it comes to their strong points and weaknesses, they are again very similar. Let's begin with their strong points. The first one is their outstanding fuel efficiency. They can both give as much as 30 kilometers per liter, which is just so impressive, yet they have no sophisticated hybrid technology. Secondly, these are very affordable cars to maintain. Servicing them is so cheap and even their spare parts are very affordable and also easy to get. So for a side hustle, these cars will give you an easy time in terms of the running and maintenance costs. Thirdly, they are both very reliable. They are basic and straightforward. The engines are simple, so the chances of, of anything ever going wrong are very minimal as long as you maintain them well. Lastly, being very compact cars, they are very easy to drive and park in a town or a city. Moving on to their weaknesses or weak points, they are very limited in terms of their boot space. There's good legroom at the second row, but that has really compromised on the boot space. So carrying bulky items is not that possible in any of these two cars. Another weak point that is common with three-cylinder engines is a bit of vibration. This is just a minor con. These three-cylinder engines are not that well refined and balanced, co balanced compared to four-cylinder engines. But that said, the fact that they can give up to 30 kilometers per liter more than makes up for those slight vibrations. The last con is specific to the Suzuki Alto. This car is not that appealing in terms of the exterior design and many have agreed to this. In fact, being that these two cars are similar in many ways, it's the finer details like the aesthetics that can now help to draw a line between them. So that said, which one would I recommend? Going straight to the point, that will be the Daihatsu Mira. But if you like the looks of the Suzuki Alto, then go for it. Both cars are very similar in many ways. Do let me know which one would be your pick in the comment section. Personally, I just don't like the looks of the Suzuki Alto, so I would get the Daihatsu Mira. It, it does everything just as well as the Suzuki Alto. That said, there may be another better city car than these two, a car that is slightly more refined and a bit more spacious. I'm talking about the Honda N1. That's the car we will be talking about next. Should you go for it instead of the Alto and Daihatsu Mira? We will find out in that video, so please stick around for that. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope this has been helpful. As always, if you have any inquiries, feel free to reach me via WhatsApp or email. And also, please don't forget to subscribe for more informative content on cars as well as bikes. That's it for this particular episode. Stay safe and see you in the next one.